Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Forky here. You know, don't you? You know. Right, today I'm joined by Matt, my pal from Essex. How are you doing, Matt? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Good to be back on, Russ. Yeah. Good to be back on. Been a while. Yeah, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a review of the uh, matchroom show from Milton Keynes last night. Did you watch it, Matt? Yeah, I watched it. What did you think? Well, average at best, being kind. To be fair, um, I enjoyed the first fight. I thought that was competitive. I didn't. I thought. Um, I thought the Babbage fight, I thought that was just woeful. Um didn't mind the uh didn't didn't mind that the 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 Fiaz Kane Baker fight. I thought that was a fairly good test for someone who's five and oh at the minute. I didn't didn't I'm not really grumbling at that. And um I thought the we'll Chantel Cameron fight. Yeah. We'll go Pardon? through them then, yeah. Shall we go through them? Go on him. Right. John Arden, eight one and one against Adolphia, Linus Adolphia, 15 and 0. What did you think of that fight? Bearing in mind, John Harding was trained by Mark Tibbs, is now trained by Xavier Miller. I thought I thought it was a, I thought it was a competitive fight in spots, but you could you could just tell that Adolphia had a lot a bit too much for him, just skill wise. But like there was flashes, there was flashes for John Arden Jr. in that fight. But I just thought, I thought his variety, I thought his, his just his skills, his speed was a, a lot better. And um, I think it, I think it showed. I think by, but after the sixth, seventh round, it was the body shots as well were taking a toll on him. And uh, I couldn't really argue with a stoppage, really. To be fair, whatever happened to? Uh... Fighters that weren't as skillful as another fighter, just having super fitness and super toughness, you know, to get you through. You're a bit like Clinton Woods, uh, Carl Froch. There's none of that nowadays, is there? John Arden isn't in the league for Adolphia for skills, his skill set, is he? So why nah. could he be fit because he was blowing out his ass after four rounds? Yeah, he looked tired, didn't he? He did oh, look tired. tired mate. I mean, 37 next birthday as well. Is he heading for Skid Row? Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Not Skid, Skid, but he's on his, yeah, he's, he's on his way down. I mean, he probably won two more fights and probably that'd be it for him, to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. So, considering he's just got, considering I don't know his complete backstory, so I'm not going to say that I'm doing him an expert on it, but he's, to be competing at the level he's he's fighting at, it's probably not a bad, not not really a bad thing considering where he's been, the prison time he's done, and his backstory, to be fair. So, um, do you, you know, feel that? Do you feel that Dylan White's just signing these people so he can put them on his undercards and get them out there with Eddie Earn and fill gaps? Do you think that you think he's just signing people for the sake of it and trying to create a bit of bit of a story around them? I mean, we keep hearing off uh, Bean that uh, John Arden's had a tough life; he's been in jail and all that. I mean, is he the only person that's been in jail in boxing or had a tough life? I mean, I'm sick of hearing this. It's a great story. We're overweight. We're in jail and all that. They're just everyday things that normal people have to deal with. So why is it this great story? It's a bit like this with Babbage. We keep hearing that he turns into this alter ego when he goes in the ring and all that. And they're pushing this narrative to fans now. And I just think it's out of control. The narrative's been out of control, really. Like... The way the way it's been going and it's just slowly, slowly getting worse in it. The uh, I mean, all these, but all, all a lot of these fighters, they're from council estates, and I mean, just getting to getting to a decent level in boxing, you've got to have a lot about you. Do you know what I mean? Just that grit, that determination, and just years and years of in the gym of just practicing, 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 and keep going. So. I mean, yeah, he's spinning all spinning all sorts of narratives, and 
I mean, it gets to a point where you got to mute, you got to mute, you got to mute it, because it's just better watching it in silence. To be fair, I watch it on. A, I watched that that's own stream last night that somebody sent me. I think Johnny Owen sent me it because I uh, I can't I can't watch the Sky one. I, I can't stomach. I can't stomach them no more. It's become embarrassing. But even their cheerleaders, the Dazon lot, you know, Nicole and Alex, Alex Arthur, they were cheerleading last night and it was embarrassing, mate. Is this where yeah. we're heading now? Is this where it's heading? Because it's dying on its arse in front of our eyes, isn't it? Yeah, it's getting worse. If we say it's anything, not... we're haters or bitter or jealous. Well... Listen, people can say what they want. At the end of the day, we're just calling it how we see it. We got, we've all got, we've all got eyes, haven't we, Russ? Yeah. I mean, and this, uh, and you can, you can, you can see, you, you can, you can see what's happening. You can see how the fight's panning out, and who's getting on top, and who's had the better round. So, I mean, I can't, I don't know about the Sky commentary. I mean, that's. <sighs> They, they, they've both got their roles, but it just needs it just needs a shake up. I just need to hear other voices that are gonna just tell us what's what and just just being honest, man. It's just yeah. like look, look, they've got a business to run. I get it, and they've got to make the they've got to make the fighters look good and whatnot and seem better than what they are. But like, come on, uh, come on. <coughs> All right then. Uh, uh, moving on. Right, we're going to talk now about the fight, the second fight that was on, and then we're going to talk about the referee and, and also he judged it as well. John Edgett's against Jan Arden. John Edgett's debut. Jan Arden two and four. I had Jan Arden winning by three rounds to one, very very clearly. The round Edgett's won. I will be generous to him I could have said that were a shared round I didn't really have him winning around but yeah I gave it 3-1 Ian John Lewis who I told everybody about last month in a video do you remember yeah Ian John Lewis corrupt or incompetent or incompetent or corruption go watch that on my channel I told you all I shook up the world and everybody went oh, okay you're a hater well, they're not saying that this morning, are they? Because my inbox is chock a block. Ian John Lewis last night showed yet again why he is on the matchroom payroll. It was embarrassing. Yep. John Edges didn't win that fight. It was worse than the Terry Harper situation where he had it a draw. Two seconds, mate. Let me call you back, pal. I'm just filming. All right, mate. I'll speak to you. In a bit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'll, let me just finish this and I'll ring you back. Yeah. In a bit. I've got a temperature 38.9 on her this morning. Oh, wow. Yeah, 38.9. So it's uh, it's gone down a bit since then. Have a look. We're going to get tested for COVID. 37.2 now. So I don't think I've got COVID. Do you? <sighs> I don't know, mate. I mean, with this, this, you don't know if you got it, if you haven't got it. I feel better, like, I've some paracetamol and a cold bath. You might just have a cold. You, To be honest with you, you might just have a cold. It. I'm not snivelling. No. But you don't have to have the symptoms to be that. But it's just probably be better to be on the safe side. Just get yourself checked out at the minute, I think, yeah. with the way the world is, but... Anyway, but yeah, getting back to getting back to get it, back it, to it but getting back to this referee. I mean, yeah. Listen, I, listen. I don't want to. I, I can't hammer that kid because he's a young kid. He's eighteen, and that, and uh, he's just starting out on his pro journey. But he didn't. He, he wasn't hardly. Russ, he wasn't hardly landing everything. No. That the fella, the fella, the fella was just crouched down, and he was just he was just slipping near the majority of his jabs, if not all of if not all of them, or ninety percent of his jabs. He couldn't he couldn't put his punches together properly. He it, like it. It was just it wasn't one way traffic, but you could just tell. It's only a four rounder, but you could just tell that he was get he was losing every round. Just 
just buy that little bit more, you know, and he was getting false back on his back, 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 back foot. And listen, listen, it's nothing against the kid, but judging is just, it's just disgraceful. I've not watched the interview yet with the, with this John Arden fella, but oh, it, it, listen, like it, it gets swept under the carpet again, wouldn't it, Russ? And this, it, by. Arden, we're on about John Etches, aren't we? Yeah. Well, well, we're we're talking about yeah the referee's decision. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ian John this would get, yeah. get brushed under the carpet. So I think that because it's a four rounder, they give a benefit of the doubt the referees, don't they? But why should they? That Jan Arden's got a career best win there on a match room show. He should be moving on now at three and four and oh his record. And having beaten an highly decorated amateur on a matchroom card, but instead is going to be going home feeling cheated. Eddie's Eddie's come out and said, "Oh, I had it a draw. That means that it were a loss." Yep, uh, Eddie's exactly going that. To draw. He is fighter on an home show. It means his fighter got beat. He had Terry Harper a draw. That means it's a loss. He had this Harper Jonas. He's got John Edges draw, and that means it's a loss, doesn't it? We know, don't we? We know. I just felt I felt gutted for that Jan Arden and it was a bit like the crawler, the crawler farewell party, you know, where he lost by about four or five rounds and they gave it to Crawler, didn't they? Yeah, well, so different situations. He said, he's, oh, he's retiring anyway, it don't matter. Of course it matters. It matters to the opponent, doesn't it? It matters to the fans. We might like Crawler, he might be popular, but he got flogged in his last fight, didn't he? So why does he deserve to go out on a win? He doesn't. And he knew that as well when scores were read out. That John Edges last night, he knew he got licked. You well, could just tell the way that his, that, that, that his opponent stormed out the ring and it was... Uh, yeah, it's just... It's, dis, it's discouraging to watch, isn't it, really? Do you know what I mean? And... Um, yeah. You know, if he wins that four round of that kid, where does his career go? Is it, well, it, it, it benefits him, doesn't it? I can't see how it's a minus. Well, on Dazone, but, that stream I watched it on last night, when the scores were read out on every, every end of every end of every fight, they never had the camera pointing at it, so we didn't get to see that on the stream. But uh, I would assume on Sky, if you were watching Sky, you'd have got to see him storm off that kid, did you? Yeah, yeah, you did, you did. And it's becoming, it's becoming now every single show, isn't it? We're talking about uh, judging. score. We're talking about scorecards, and it's the same person, isn't it? Ian John Lewis. Mr. Incom he's either incompetent or he's corrupt. Now, if you had a window fitter at your house and he couldn't do an eight seggy bow bay, right, he couldn't screw it to the poles and it was hanging out and it were all not right and that, that's incompetent. So you'd sack him, wouldn't you? You wouldn't have him again. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is, this probably goes that when when boxing resumes properly and you can have crowds back and get these. It probably happens on all these small shows as well. Yeah, but it's probably happens to every it week. Matchroom shows, Matt. Yeah, of course it is, mate. And and listen, I I listen. I haven't spoke to you in a while. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't forgave Victor Lachlan as well. Like. That scumbag giving it 97 92 to Katie Taylor against Pursun in the rematch. Yeah, do you know why the they other do month? That? Do you know why they do that? Let me tell you this they do that because they want to be called again, they don't want to have black marks again, and they want to come and work again. For example, CJ Ross and Adelaide Bird, people like that, and Adelaide Bird's husband, he's a ref, isn't he? They're on eight to ten thousand pounds per night in Vegas, right? Now, they get put up in an hotel, Bellagio or wherever, they get free casino chips, meals on wheels, and driven about in a limo. We're not saying they're taking back handers, but when you're getting treated like that, you'll think, this is all right. I'm going to give a good decision for the home fighter and the home promoter because look what he's doing for me. It all goes back to... When Robin Reed fought Sven Ockey and Robin and Brian Hughes caught the Sourlands, and yeah, you you know, don't you, Calla? You know, your old man, and all the officials and the judges, the judges and the ref, all eating at the last supper in the hotel in, in, in Germany. 
Now, would you get that with the Premier League? Would you have Jose Mourinho sat there with all officials and, and referee and all that, having a bit of a tete a tete and a bite to eat? No. So why do we have to put up with that in boxing? Because that's what's going on, and it's been going on for too long now. And nobody's making a stand against it. No board, registered board license, licensees, or whatever you want to call license holders, nobody's saying a word because they don't want to lose their license. So what 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 so what are we in a cult of summer? Is that where it is? A cult? Mm. Is that well, where they won't dig the referee out. They won't unless you unless it's someone properly outspoken, they won't dig the they I won't dig the referee gone. out. Ever since that day he shafted Enzo Macronelli, that Ian John Lewis, I wanted him gone. Whatever money you've had from board or promoters, consider it for several play. Take the train, get out of Dodge. Get out mm-hmm. of Dodge. And he's been making and mistake after mistake after mistake since. Fair enough, he apologised for that, but he still had a loss on his record, didn't he, Enzo? He's got to go. Ian John Lewis has got to go. He needs a full overall... The whole lot of them wants bulldozing and starting again. It's corruption or incompetence. They're either corrupt or they're doing it because they want to be called again because they need the money, or they're incompetent, which means they can't do the job. If they do the job correctly, they're frightened that they're not going to get called again. When you're picking up money like these people are picking up and they've got jobs as well, they've got good lifestyles. I know some of them, I'm not going to say you, referees, I know where they live, what they drive, and all sorts. And I think, you know, they're on a good do here, these. Yeah. They're on a good do, flown all over, meals on wheels, hotels, expenses, and all that. They're all great, isn't it? That, isn't it? Right? Yeah. But you that. Think, you think, go on, sorry. Russ, you just, you, talking about like an overall and that, you just think, how many fighters retiring all uh, every year? Just n- not even mainstream fighters like the fighters we see on the telly and that. Just normal, normal like fighters, small fighters, or e- e- what, whatever. Like, am it, like surely some of these fighters who are retiring, surely the ball can stick them through courses so they can learn to be judges, learn to be referees. Do you know well, what I mean? Like, this, get, right? get some new blood. Get some new blood in. Get some new blood in. You know, and just get and start these people on the wheel, so they can they can train and get better and learn from these older officials and get a shake up in. Robin, what Robin, do you think? Right? Robin Reed's a BKB. You know, bare knuckle boxing referee. Mm-hmm. He does a show a weekend, whatever. Gets his pay and he goes on. There's no pressure whatsoever for him to be a favourite. And he says, I wouldn't do it anyway, even if there were. He's a referee. And I don't know, I don't know if the judge as well. I'm not sure, but he just goes, does his job, and that's it. So I said, Well, why don't you go do it for uh board, be a referee? So now I don't want to do it. So I says, I'm not gonna go into detail to what he said, but I think you know why, don't you? Yeah, he said, look, I don't yeah, want to get I don't want to get involved with all that. I left that behind years ago. He didn't want to know. You're not interested. He does his BKB and that's it, but Look at the ex-fighters who could who could be on good money at weekends. Clinton Woods, he's an ex-fighter. He could be a referee. He knows what to look for. And and these people, because they're not needy for the money, they could just t- they could say, no, he won, or that's a stoppage, or whatever. The, the, they're not bothered. They, they could just do it fair. But this other shower, right, they want the coin, don't they? Well, what's that Ian John mm-hmm. Lewis, a prison officer? He's on a good, he's got a job on here, nine to fiver, and then he makes sure that he's available to work for board on shows. So he, he's got like two jobs on it. He probably gets more front boxing than than he does as a prison officer. So he's on a good screw, isn't he? They don't want to give yeah. that up. And I can see where no. they're coming from, but it's wrong because it's killing sport. It's like, for example, I said yesterday to that to the to the, the young kid, I forgot his name now, because I've got short term memory on Sunday, but that young kid that come on here, we're going on about bias. It starts from the top, doesn't it? From Adam Smith. If he's commentating yeah. and he's being biased, Johnny Nelson, anchor, he's gonna see that. Macklin co-commentator, he's gonna see it, and it's gonna filter down to pundits. 
And they all feel that they have to follow the lead, otherwise they might not get called again. You can't go against the grain because I know people that have gone against the grain. They don't get called back. But at least they can put their heads on pillar at night. They're not selling themselves like whores. And that's what they are, whores. Now, it's it, it filters down from the top. But then when you've got the, the referee who's judging as who's, who's judging as well, because there's no because it weren't a title fight. He's setting a precedent as well, as if to say, look, we're going to go at home fighter because it's match and look. John Edgett's got beat last night, didn't he? He got beat. You know that, I know yeah. that. And you know that as don't as well, don't you? Mm-hmm. Ian John Lewis. You corrupt. You know that. You're either corrupt or you're incompetent. Take the train and get out of Dodge. Go now while you still can. Because what's going to end up happening, they're going to end up killing the sport and it'll go underground, you know. Moving on. Russ, 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 one last thing about all this, right? It's like, when you're talking about just British title, European titles, just fights that matter that elevate people's careers, you're talking about people's lives here, do you know what I mean? Yes, we are, you, yeah, like, yes, we are. Listen, listen, people, listen, human beings are human beings. We make mistakes, yeah? We make mistakes every day, yeah? yeah. But, like... You've got, listen, this is people's livelihoods and this is like life-changing moments. Like, look at look at John Ryder and that, with the judging on that. That goes, oh, that goes for, that, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, yeah, debatable decision. We don't need to get into the decision and whatnot, but we're talking, this is like, it's life-changing. He wins that fight, it's it's... It's life changing for him. He goes on um, yeah. um, mega, mega purses yeah. and he sets his family up. Yeah. You know, like you, you got to call it how it is, and you got to be as neutral as you can. But these people don't seem to be able to do that. No, I mean you've just got... for their own, just just for their own satisfaction, and In just the last few weeks just... we've had Jonas been robbed, haven't she? I thought Pasoon got robbed a second time. We've had yeah. I th- Listen, it's beyond me that people people were uh, like. Let me tell you about that Pursuit fight. I was sitting there watching it with a couple of friends and a, and a couple of a couple of girls watching it. And uh, these these girls were watching the fight, Russ, and they were like, Katie talking about Katie Taylor. She's like, she's getting absolutely bashed up here, you know. She and listen, she had her spots in the fight. I ain't gonna say she didn't, yeah, because she did. She done some good inside work and she did pick her off nice, but. I thought Pursuit clearly won the fight, and it's, it, it's, it don't matter now. She's got another fight scheduled, and it, it, the, the sky narrative rolls on. But I thought she clearly won the fight, and it's a fair play to Natasha Jones because she even told told her how it is, and she was like, "Yeah, I thought I still thought Pursuit won the fight." Yeah, okay. and. Uh, Anyway, moving on. Fias, 5-0, and oh, one on points against Barker, 13-6. and six. Uh, Ian John Lewis. I had I had that a draw, me. I, I couldn't see where they were coming from with that score as well, could you? Mm, I, thought, I thought Fias just... I thought he edged it. I well, thought he edged it, to be, to be, honest, to be honest with you, Russ. I had it a draw, but... but I, I preferred his work. I, f- I preferred the cuter work. Yeah. Did put a lot of pressure on Kane Baker, and he's um, he's a good fighter in that. But I thought, yeah, he has not really got the pop on his punches, Russ. But I thought, he, I thought he was the better fighter. Not, to, I thought he deserved the win. Right. Got to be honest, we are. Uh, Just my opinion, but we're not going to agree on everything, mate. So you need to go to spec savers, Matt. <laughs> 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 right, the Savage, Babic, 4-0 and oh, against Kennedy, 13-1-1. One and one. Knocked him out in third. I mean, this Savage, right, he's one of Dylan White's, isn't he? He, he, he turns into this Savage when he gets in the ring. It's his alter ego and all that. Oh. The PR that this guy's had on IFL and Sky is off the charts, isn't it? Yeah. You know what Dave yeah. Allen would do to this guy, right, this Babic? He'd tear him a new arsehole, mate. Dave Allen would tear him a new arsehole if, when they, if, if they if they ended up meeting, mate. I swear to God, honestly. Dave, Dave beats him, mate, like he's his daddy. That's what forget I Dave Allen, mate. Any decent cruiserweight beats him, mate. You what? 
any decent cruiserweight. Look, people like Lawrence Acoli, you're talking about React Poor, Juma, people you like that. Pardon? Pete, oh, Babic. Yeah. Yeah, Babic, his pony, mate. What? They've got, he's, got a, he's got a big old beard. He's talking like Jean Claude Van Damme, bald head, and, he's, and they're calling him the savage. I mean, they even said, let's, let's not call him Alan Babic. Let's just call him the savage. That when they call him on Dazzo, and I'm like, I'm like, what am I hearing? They were talking about him like he was some WWE character. What's all that about? Hey, what is all that about? I I God knows. I don't know how he's listening. I know he's Dillian White, mate. Dillian White's mate, and he sparred with him and helped him out in camp and that, but. Like this, this is the pro- this is the problem about being mates and and whatnot. You could have had other you could have had other British fighters on, giving that opportunity to other other decent up and coming fighters. Russ, do you know what I mean? When other people sitting on the shelf, yeah, who deserve it, who deserve an opportunity. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and they're giving it to just this fellow who's listen. At the end of the day, all they're doing is setting him up to get steamrolled sooner or later by an half decent heavyweight. Yeah. So just yeah, just it just be a step. It'd be a stepping stone for someone, uh, so, some up and coming matchroom fighter or an established matchroom fighter, just to absolutely steamroll and turn. All right, then look at it like this, right? What would Ergovic do to that Babbage? Be a bloodbath, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah, three, four rounds. It'd be a bloodbath, mate. It'd be a bloodbath. He couldn't even do out with that Kennedy. Do you know what, mate? Right? I'll go to Peter Fury's gym now or the two months there. I reckon I'd get stuck into that Kennedy. You know, if I were 28 oh, younger, I'd be stuck straight into him. He, he, he didn't show me anything to suggest that he should be fighting on Sky. And what were all that about? Do you know what? I have my mate I have my mate messaging me saying this fella, this Irish fella, looks like he's been living in the pub the last three, four months. It, it, it didn't look like because he's Irish, you don't mean to say he can fight. I mean, I, I couldn't believe when I was Pascal Collins, is it? Is that how we're training him? Yeah. Pascal Collins, you should be embarrassed turning up with a fighter in that condition and and technically limited like that on a sky show. I mean what we're all that about? Uh, I don't, I don't get where I'm coming from. Who's licensed him, Kennedy, to fight? He shouldn't have a license, man. He should not have a license. He's the Robin Deakin of Irish heavyweight boxing or cruiserweight boxing, whatever it is. He should not have a license, him. That would, that would, that would, Baba, Baba, Ru- <laughs> Russ, Russ, yeah, right, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Bobby could beat Baba. Shocking, mate. Right, so forget about who's licensing as well. Who's okayed that fight? Who's okayed that fight? To, who, who's okayed that fight to actually... You mean the quality to, control? Yeah. Like, it, how can it, you he just, signs off on them, doesn't he? His so word can, is final, right? He signs off on them. Ed Robinson, I know you're watching. You're a shit house as well. You should be out. You should be speaking up for yourself. And saying, what are we serving up here? It's garbage, mate, yeah. what they're serving up. Garbage. I actually met Ed Robinson a few years ago, about seven years ago. I picked him up at Cunningsbury train station one night and we went up to Hilltop Hotel and sank a few beers. I took him back to hotel in Sheffield, about 120, that motorway, shitting right up. I was steaming as well. He says, oh, could you imagine if you were crashed? He says, yeah, you'd be on, you'd be on the sky, wouldn't we? Got him back to Hilton and I thought he were all right. Since then, he's changed his job and he's behind the scenes. So he's mm. going to have a say about quality control because he's ex-boxer and only, I know he only had two fights and he's likeable. He should be saying, what are we serving up here on Sky Sports? What? Ed, you've got my email. Give me a ring. Give me an email, sorry. Can you come what on are we to serving it, up here? Babic? Who is he? Crew blown up cruiser. Against this Kennedy, or, or somebody's just dragged out at pub after 10 Guinnesses. What was that? What was that? I'm sat watching it. I'm like, what are they serving up here? No wonder Eddie didn't want to turn up on night. Yeah, another he's, thing. He's, got, ma- he's made the match, though, Russ, and he's telling that he's telling everyone that he, oh, well, don't rule out Kennedy. He's gonna come and have he's gonna come and have a go. Yeah, sure. 
Listen to me. Surely, listen surely to me. was. Listen to this. Do you know when they turn around and they say, oh, he, he, he's in with a good opponent, he's game, he's durable, uh, and he's really up for it. When they say that about an opponent, back other one by KO. Because it means he's just there as a body, as a move around. They were there to grow the, grow the savage... Uh, Savage story, weren't they? I am savage. I turn into a savage when I get into a ring. What the fuck was that last night? Shite. So uh, let me move on anyway. I'm, I'm going to end up with a fucking ulcer. I'm swearing now. Yeah. Right, Chantel Cameron. Right. She's fighting a woman for a world title fight. This is how easy it is now to get a world title. The woman wasn't even bothered about oh. the world title. She <laughs> Turned up, it's the highest ever weight that's been. It's the highest anybody's been over a weight for a WBC belt ever. Five and a half pound, were it? She was five and a half pound overweight, so the belt then becomes vacant. So if Chantel wins, she can win the belt. The other one, if she the one, she wouldn't have had the belt. She weren't even bothered about that, was she? You know the Brazilian woman. What was she called? Uh, all right, you couldn't care, Array, she couldn't you care know, less. You know, Cameron, a raw jar was it? A Rayo, yeah, yeah, garbage, mate. Garbage, it would, it would utter guy. Look, that was garbage, mate. That fight was garbage. And I wanted Chantal Cameron. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be derogatory, but she looked out of shape. She looked, she, she looked, yes, yeah, she looked, she looked flat, she looked lethargic. They both yeah, did. it was. It was crap. It was crap. Both did. And I looked at the odds, Russ, and I thought, well, it's, you're going to have a go. She's going to come and have a go. Listen, mate, this is how I look at it. That that was served up last night. Yeah, well, you, know, you, t- you know that Cameron trains all the time, though. Do you know what I mean? So, hey. but <sighs> You what? What did you say, mate? Yeah, if you've got a promoter, yeah. You've got the right promoter and, and, they're, and they're, uh, they're pearly enough with the sanctioning bodies. I said, if you've got the right promoter, yeah, it's easy to get a world title for a woman. Do you know? I mean, look at Savannah, right? She's fighting that ranking, isn't she? Do you know, so, have you any idea what Savannah does to that ranking? You know, at 17, she blows her away, mate, and bashes her. She bashes her up, mate, Savannah Marshall. She bashes her. That's a mismatch, that. Get your money on Savannah Marshall by KO. Because that fight is shocking. That's a shocking matchup. But that's how easy it is to pick a title up when, you, when you're a woman. Now, because there's no women boxers, but... The champion turning up five and a half pound of a weight, fat as a pig, Michelin man, in ring, covered in tats. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Is that what they're going to say? You there, up, mate. Man? Sorry, I just lost you. Can you hear me now? Hey. Well, sorry, mate. I lost you there for about 30 seconds. Don't worry about it. Right, moving on from Chantel Cameron, then she's the world champion. Good luck to her, but that would yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can see, I see you now as well. So that would have been Chantel. Hey, can you hear me? Put listen, Guardian Chantel Cam Katie Taylor for it now. Make you competitive for that. Yeah, I can hear. Katie Taylor beats Chantel Cameron, in my opinion. She's too much for her. She's too busy. Even if she's throwing punches and missing, she's too busy. If Chantel couldn't get that work girl out there last night, she's not going to get Katie Taylor out there, is she? Um, I don't, who's going to get a decision against Katie Taylor? Who's going to beat her on points? They're not going to have that, are they? Well, but well, she's 34 now, mate. I don't, I don't, how long has she got left? I mean, she's had a couple of hard fights with her soon. I think, I think it's the right time to probably get her, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't, I, I... all right. Then moving on to main event, Joshua Boatsy against that. I think she's on the Dan now. To be... 
to be what? honest. You what, mate? Matt, can you hear me? You there, mate? I'm talking to my fucking self here, aren't I? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, no. Can it keeps going in and out, though? Is your internet all right at your end, yeah? Yeah, sound, mate. Can you hear me now, yeah? Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, but it keeps going in and out, Russ. Does it? Yeah. All right, then. Moving on to Joshua Boazzi, uh against uh, Kalik, some mate of Babich's and Dylan White's. Uh, seventh round KO. Uh, where is he heading now, Boatsy? Hey. I think he'd be in another flat with another non puncher. Yeah. And uh, and then you have to you're gonna have to sink or swim, I think. Yeah. Well, I think Callum Johnson beats him, and I think Yard beats him as well. What did you make of it last night, Russ? I thought I thought he won, but I, I don't think he's as good as what they're making out, and I can see why they've protected him. No. He was getting clipped off a guy yeah. that was shite. I mean, he won he? <laughs> What do you think? I don't think I don't think what he's been in with. I don't, I don't, he, he sort of, sort of knew his he sort of knew his way Who's around the wing, win? but he didn't have a he didn't have enough. Well, no, he's not got he's not <laughs> he's not got an outstanding record, has he? So, but I don't I don't think he was the I don't think he was the worst opponent, Russ. Like to be to be totally honest with you. But we gave Bratzi a bit more to think about than what I was even expecting. Well, the, what we've got learning on no, job. They've been out 14 fights. months, so they're not going to match him with some killer, are they? Matt, what we've got fucking learning on job fights, headline. Yeah. This guy, yeah. Learning on job. Is that yeah. where we're at? I suppose, that's a good point. Well, shouldn't be headlining, should it? It shouldn't be headlining a fight. That should, that should be, that should be um, a co main or for. Other than the card or where Babich was, that sort of fight, and then you should have a competitive main event. Yeah, but what's happened is you've got Boatsis uh, affiliated with Joshua, and that other kid's affiliated with Dylan White and Babich. So it's all all boys' club, in it, all looking after each other. Can you get your mate? You're not cheap, and we'll give him a bit yeah. of exposure, but he's going to have to take a lot less money. But blah de blah, we know what's been going on. Some at purses, I'm not going to repeat it because somebody told me in conference, but some at purses that they were getting. Let me tell you this fighters are getting less now than they were 25 years ago. 25 years ago, Frank Warren were paying people at that level more than what they're getting now. That's a fact. You could take that to the bank. So it's a joke, mate. Not a joke. It's criminal, isn't it? Criminal, mate. Kids spewing the guts up. Uh, and what put, do you want to see? Kids getting knocked about and that for chip for chump change. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And it's no wonder Dave Allen knocked knocked Eddie Earns off his back. I can understand what, that what? Oh. Well, yeah, compared to what he's been getting, he's not going to want to. He's not going to want to go in with someone half decent when he's been earning the sort of purses that he's earned previously, has he? So, got 200 grand for David Price. And if he'd have beat Price, he'd have got 400 for Pavetkin. So, it's not bad, is it? No, it's not. So, he's not going to fight. Buys him a few more asses up there, doesn't it? So, hey, hey, no, not now. What? Not, not now. No, not now. No, not now. So, other than what did that, you? Uh, where do you think Baratzi goes next? What do you think they do with him, Russ? Well, I don't think they're going to put him near Callum Johnson or Yard. I think they're just going to give him another another gimme fight, uh, and I think that's all it is. And somebody's got to stand up and say, "Enough is enough." Enough's enough now. It was 2016 when he won his bronze medal. Went into his fifth year now since then, and he's still having uh, tick over fights and learning not job fights. 
I don't know. I don't know where he's heading, mate. Who's advising him? Anthony Joshua. Yeah. What, what? What? Why? What? What's going on? It's not good. And uh, what do you think about him taking a knee? Uh, did Did the Sky commentators mention that? Uh, yeah, they did. Yeah. Who were, who were commentators on Sky? Were it Bean and somebody else? Macklin, yeah. Macklin, well. Macklin, yeah. Let me tell you this: they mentioned it. Did Johnny? Was Johnny Nelson there? He was. He was doing the punditry with Anna Wooler. Second knee, Nelson. No, no. No, he, 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 he was showing Baretti come out and when he come out it showed he, he, he come out the music come out he took a knee and then he then he walked to the ring after that to his well, ring did, music did nobody mention it? yeah they mentioned it briefly and uh, just say what he believes in and then they rolled on they rolled on towards the fight and Two Talking seconds. about Brett, he's bigging him up. Kevin, I'm just filming, mate. I'll call you back, yeah? All right. You're not factory today, then? No, I'm at home. All right, then. Speak to you later. All right. So, uh, all right, then, moving on. Uh, Mark's had a 10 foot show. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it a four for efforts, but I'm not happy. Not happy at all. But the mother fight camp shows were better. That were like garbage. That garbage, and it's, it's only because I know what some of them yeah. purse wise. I mean, basically, we're getting people on cheap and dressing it up. People with undefeated records or one defeat and, and and a draw like that, Kennedy. But they were all fighting for chump change, mate. The shows are four out of ten, and he should be embarrassed. But Warren's shows have not been any better, have they? I mean, did you yeah. see the guy Frampton for that? Were bad, wasn't it? No. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the and the 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 the, the yard fault was it weren't wasn't great either. Even if he'd been in with Lyndon Arthur, they weren't yeah. great. Yeah, they're not. And they're not good main record, events, are they? Lyndon really. Arthur. Lyndon Arthur's got a padded record, hasn't he? You know what? I'm yeah, well, Yard had a pad, padded record until we went in with Kovalev. Listen, you know what? I'm not, I didn't Go say uh, Yard, I said Arthur, but Yard's got one as well. What I'm noticing, right, more than ever, is this Awara Davis, Connor Ben, uh, Luke Campbell. Uh, Tommy Coyle, Anthony Yard, Lyndon Arthur. None of these have got a British title between them. Nobody seems to want to get a British title or a European, do they, nowadays? They all want to get these IBF and WBA trinkets, don't they? WBC's trinket belts. Why ain't nobody... It's got the rankings, do it? Eh? No, bro. Is there something wrong with connection? Because when I talk, it goes fucking yeah. quiet. And then I'm thinking that you're giving me my cue to talk. Then you talk. <laughs> Are you not? Is it not going through? Yeah, it's slower. Is it? Right. Yeah, right. but it's slower. When I'm talking, it's coming to you about five seconds later. Oh, is it? All right. But Where's sometimes that? it's clear as day, so it's like in and out. So I don't know if it's your connection, your end. It's, but where, where, I, where I am right now in Essex... It's really bad weather, so that might be affecting it. Yeah. Well, the point I want to make so. is this. The point I want to make is this. Nobody seems to be wanting to be going for British titles and European titles. They're all going for IBF international crap or this and that. Is anybody going to win a British title? Is Conor Ben going to fight for a British welterweight title? Hey. Is he? Your guess is as good as mine, mate. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd assume I'd assume so, but I'm not I'm not so sure now. They want to just give him another opponent, and then 
make this Jenkins fight, but I want I just I want to see him against I want to see him against someone now. I've heard all the hype and just want, I just want to see him against someone and see how good he is. Yeah. Yeah. All right then, mate. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure for having you on, Matt. I hope you're well. How are you coping with your new gaffer? You all right? Have you painted it? Yeah, it's coming along. I've seen you over a few hours later on. I want to be actually. A week I've seen you over a bit. Hi. Pardon? What are you doing a room a week? What's that? What are you doing a room a week? Uh, well, it's basically it's all done. That it's basically all done, really. Uh, just a few other things, blind stuff like that, and flooring. Now get the floor done. Thirty-six point eight. Does that mean I'm okay now? You seem like you're on the mend, mate. Yeah, thirty-six point eight or thirty-eight point nine. So that's not bad, is it? I feel a bit better now. <sighs> but uh, tough times, isn't it, kid? Yeah, it is tough times. It's not. Uh, it's not great out there at the minute. It's right. Not great. But... That's why I need a good. We need these good fights to look forward to, Russ. We do, mate. We do. We need. We need. We need some of mate. Because that last night, what Eddie Earn served up were garbage. No wonder he's pretending he's got COVID and stopping at home. Uh, it's some. You know what? I just want to finish off on. I mm. said it was six hundred and forty-two because I've been doing a bit of research. Eddie said it was over six hundred people that were tested. So I got that right, and people said I was plucking numbers out at Sky. Only two people failed it, him and his dad, Barry. I find that amazing, do you? Do you find that amazing? And he's saying that he can't have a meeting. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm astonished. Yeah, well, I, I am. Well, let, let me finish on this. Why can't they have a meeting on Zoom and sort these fights out like that? Why do they have to fucking meet? If they can't stand sight of each other. There's no love lost between Warrens and Earns. Just do it on Zoom. And go through it all like we're going through it all now. Get a paper and pen and start writing things down, some numbers and blah de blah. Oh, is it because they don't want other one recording it or blah de blah? I don't know, but something yeah. needs to happen. But if they can't do it on Zoom, there's something wrong, isn't there? Because Eddie's giving us a daily update every day. So why can't I yeah, do, do a Zoom with Frank Warren? And they both agree with the lawyers that nobody records it and that it's whatever. I don't know, mate. But it's a load of shite, and I think the Hearns are stalling, doing something with Warren. That's what I think. They're playing for time. So, so it is what it is, isn't it? All right, then, mate. Yeah. Well, listen. They need to make these. They need to make these fights. But well, no, no, no. It's not good, mate. Is it not good at all? Not yeah, good. Russ, Russ. Yeah. Russ, we need to do this again, mate, because the connection's rubbish. So uh, yeah, all right. Then, we mate. need to we need to do this again, ever just a proper just a proper chat. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. going to things in a bit more detail. So all right, then, mate. I'll jot some what's stuff going on. We'll do so. it at the end of week, yeah. But thanks for thanks for having us on, mate. All right, kid. You take care. Yeah, end of the week when the connection's right, we're going to some. We're going to it properly, yeah. We'll we'll do a balls deep. You too, mate, and wish all your family the best. Take care, mate. Same to you. Mate. Yeah, 100%. Yes. All the best. Bye, All mate. Best, Bye, mate. Right. Bye, mate. Bye. Right. Well, uh, that was Matt Skelton, not Matt Skelton, the boxer from, is it Luton? Matt Skelton, the uh, cabbie from Essex. He's a nice kid. He lives right corner from Eddie Earn's office. So when I go down and see him, that'll be good, wouldn't it? I can go down and let Eddie's tyres down on his Rolls Royce. <laughs> so do apologise for the swearing, but I'm not really bothered if you're offended because it's my channel and I can do what I want. But I just get raging over what I'm seeing. Corruption, incompetence and lies. And it's just becoming the norm, isn't it, now? It's sending me mad, sending me bonkers. But all right then, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thank you for liking and subscribing and sharing the video. You don't have to share it if you thought it were crap. So I wouldn't share it if it were crap. If it were all right, I'd share it. All right. Don't forget to hit the notification button because then you get your porky fix. 
straight to your phone. All right. Can't be a bit of porky, can you? Peace out.